Pain. It is your boy Big Death bringing to you a spooky Eagles preview. Okay, it's not very spooky, but let me go on ahead and take this mask off. Yeah, that way you can see my face. It's hot as hell in here with all this on. Anyway, before I get into our preview, before I get into our opponents, the Denver Broncos, uh, want to know something funny? Uh, I, I I slept. I slept. I stayed up until four in the morning last night. I mean, I, I slept lousy. It's just one of those nights. I mean, I have bad insomnia sometimes. So get this. I get up at eleven, around eleven, eleven a.m. And I go. I for, the first thing I do is I'm laying in bed. I go and check social media, and the first thing I see is. The Eagles have traded for Jay Ajayi of the Miami Dolphins, or Ajayi, or whatever his name is. However, I don't know how you pronounce it. I don't know what the correct pronunciation is. I'm not so sure. So, yeah. So, apparently, the Eagles have traded a fourth-round pick away for Jay Ajayi, the J-Train. I, I, I was thinking, what's going on? Is this real life? Because I kind of feel like th this is a huge upgrade to our running game, and... One of the things I, I was going to make a video about this early, but I wanted to save it for my preview, you know what I mean? Just so I can do it all in one. The, the, I think this guy is going to be a great addition to our team. He, I feel like he's going to add the explosiveness that our current running game lacks. He, as good as LeGarrette Blunt is, he's not really an explosive runner. He's mainly, he's ma he's mainly a bruiser. And Smallwood and Clement are average. So, J.H.I.E. will bring in bring in the explosive factor. I mean, let, let me go pull up his stats so far this season. Before he got traded. Excuse me, one sec. So far, so far his stats are he's 138. 465, 3.4 yards a carry, including a 21 yarder. He has 14 catches, 67 yards, averages almost five yards a catch, including a 15 yarder. So it's not really, it, it's not really the same as what he was the year before. But you know what? I still think, I still think this is a great pickup, and I kind of feel like we robbed Miami. Truly do. But we'll see what happens in the long run. But I love that. I love this addition. I'm very happy about this. Anyway, on to our opponents, the Denver Broncos. Shout out to shout out to all my shout out to the friends I have online who are fans of the Denver Broncos. Shout out to Ruthless Bronco Seven, aka Easy Does It Fifty Eight. He's current. He's called Ruthless Bronco Seven on Twitter, but on Instagram he's called Easy Does It Fifty Eight. And the reason behind that is he used to be called Ruthless Bronco Seven on Instagram, but his account got suspended because the PC police snitched on him. So he had to change accounts, yeah, because of some of the shit he was posting. I mean, <laughs> some of the shit he says. I mean, he he is an atheist, so there's gonna be shit that he says that most people out there may not like. But uh, I, but he's he's still cool as shit. Shout out to him. Shout out to Jay Johnson. Shout out to Peyton Manning thirty eight. Shout out to Mile High eighteen, formerly known as. Born to Hate the Patriots, a.k.a. Savage NFL Memes. Shout out to him. They're, they're all cool as shit. I mean, I, I, was, talk, I was talking to Easy Does It 58 last night about, about this matchup. I mean, I mean, the Broncos just lost last night to the Kansas City Chiefs. But I feel the main reason they lost is because Trevor Simeon was kept turning over the damn ball. And he, 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 I mean, Easy Does It was defending him in the offseason. I mean, we were talking about it. And, but now, now that they've dropped, I mean, they started off 3-1. and one, And then they handed the Giants their first win. And then they lost two more, including a shutout to the Chargers. And he's completely given up on Simeon. He was like, yo, we need a new quarterback, dude. I was like, yeah, I, I hear you, man. That's the cool thing about, that's the cool thing about having friends that are fans of different teams because when you go to face their teams 
they can give you if they know what they're talking about, they can give you a better insight on what exactly we're facing. You know what I mean? And he basically told me that we clearly have the quarterback advantage. I feel like we have the run advantage, although C.J. Anderson w last night was better than LeGarrett Blunt was Sunday. And they got Demarius Thomas, and they clearly had the defensive advantage. They got the secondary advantage. We discussed it. I feel like Chris Harris Jr. is the most un... I, I truly feel that Chris Harris Jr. is the best corner in the NFL. That's just my opinion. And a little bit of an injury update. We are going to be without Pat Robinson because he he's on concussion protocol, which means which means that sorry bum Jalen Watkins will be in his place. Although, give Watkins credit though. He hasn't really been fucking up. He hasn't really been trashed since he's been back. He hasn't really fucked up. But one thing I want to say for sure is the guy is still garbage and... Watkins better be sticking the sorriest receiver because Denver has a pretty formidable wide receiving core. They got Emmanuel Sanders. He's coming back. They got Demarius Thomas, arguably the most underrated receiver in the entire NFL. Yeah, they got Jalen Watkins. That dude is he's terrible. He, he blows coverages. Sometimes he's missed tackles. He has gotten better with tackling. I will give him I will give him credit where it was due. He did make the tackle when he needed to. Anyway, I don't think I think this is going to be a difficult game, but I still think the Eagles should be able to pull away from this and go into the bye eight and one, and worry about those punk ass Dallas Cowboys after that. They're going to be without Ezekiel Elliott, who's been suspended. But I'm not I, I'm I'm not talking about the fucking Cowboys unless we face them. And the only time I'll even mention them otherwise is in the weekly predictions, which I'm saving for tomorrow. Anyway, let's get into the statistics. Alrighty then. Alright, what do we got? Let me put the mask back on. You want to know the funny thing? Here's what's funny. I actually see better with the mask on. Don't ask me why. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, the Eagles are ranked 6th in offense. The Broncos are ranked 15th in offense. Eagles are 14th in defense. The Denver, Denver has the number 1 defense. We are 11th in passing offense. They're 18th. We're 5th in rushing offense. They're 10th. Now let's do a further comparison. We average 371.8 yards a game. They average 341.7. We average 242.5 passing yards. They average 218.3. We average 129.2 rushing yards. We average 123.4. We average 29 points a game. They average 18.1. We, we convert 47.8 percentage of third downs. They convert 39.4%. We were 50, but I think the fact that we weren't converting as many fourth downs against San Fran yesterday, that kind of bumped our percentage down a little bit. Defensive comparisons. We allow 327.1 yards a game. They allow 261 per game. We allow 256.8 passing yards. They allow 188.1. Pretty damn lopsided. We allow 70.4 rushing yards a game. They allow 72.9. So our rush defense is slightly better than ours, and I believe ours is number one, as the commentators were saying, versus San Fran. We allow 19.5 points a game. They allow 21. We allow 31% of third down conversions. They allow 25%. So when it comes down to converting those third downs, we got our work cut out for us. Defensively, we got our work cut out for us, which leads us to the players to look out for. The players to look out for are going to be Von Miller, of course. Argue, without a doubt, in my opinion, the best linebacker in the game, though my boy C4 may disagree with that. I'll have to ask him if he still thinks that. Brandon Marshall, the linebacker Brandon Marshall, who wears number 54. Akib Talib, and Chris Harris Jr., and hold on. Forgive me, I'm kind of not been up to speed with the Broncos roster. But maybe Easy Does It 58 can help me out in the comment section. And Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders. The sleepers, I'm gonna consider 
CJ Anderson and Jamal Charles a sleeper, and I'm going to consider whoever De whoever the safety whoever the safeties for Denver are. Forgive me, I don't remember them. And the keys to winning this game is to force turnovers. I believe Brock Osweiler, Brock Osweiler will be starting for Trevor Simeon, but try to force as many turnovers as we can. Don't don't turn the ball over ourselves. Run the ball with a Legarrette Blunt and bring and bring the J train up to speed. Hold on, let me take this mask off. Yeah. Run the ball. Run the ball consistently. Move the ball consistently on offense. Carson Wentz may have his work cut out for him throwing the ball. Just try not to turn the ball over. Try to force turnovers on defense. And that's basically about it. Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up here. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe button. My Twitter and Instagram will be down in the description box. Anyway, y'all have a good y'all have a good one. Fly Eagles fly. Let's go into the bye week 8-1. Denver will not be easy though.